I never quite understood why, but the living really don't appreciate those who disturb the dead. So, it's a good thing that there ain't much alive around these parts nowadays. But welcome everybody to the Maxwell Cemetery set piece, aka the Developer's Graveyard. It is a simple yet fun set piece that has the potential to lead to plenty of grand opportunities. So, let's discuss. And let us begin with the reason behind the set piece's given name, the Developer's Graveyard. And it stems from the fact that each grave has a name of one of the many developers of Don't Starve itself. Team members of Clay Entertainment to be exact. But hold up here, they're gravestones. So having names on gravestones really isn't that novel of a concept. Well, you kind of got me there, friends. However, note that all other gravestones in this game don't actually list names. They pull from a whole list of random phrases, quotes, you name it. It is only Maxwell Cemetery that actually has gravestones with actual names. Cool stuff. But let us talk more about disturbing the dead, yes? Good thing that this set piece always spawns with the handy shovel then. When digging up graves, we have a 10% chance to spawn a ghost, a 50% chance at digging up a wide range of trinkets, a 15.35% chance at either a red or blue gem, and a 3.07% chance at gears, a life-given amulet, or even nightmare fuel. Very nice if your luck pans out. However, note that each grave dug is minus 10 sanity for ya, so watch yourself. And note this too, digging the last grave in this bone orchard comes with another surprise entirely. 18 spooky spirits will rise up and not be very happy, even if you're Wendy, a character that should actually see ghosts being neutral to her. Ghosts are slow, yes, have little health, yes, and deal small amounts of damage, yes, but a mass like this is always going to be bad news beard. So, it is a darn good thing that one could really just run away a bit to have the ghosts lose interest very quickly, and sooner rather than later, they'll just despawn entirely. Easy peasy and doable with all ghosts, actually, so keep it in mind. Oh, and while not specific to this set piece, of course, I will make brief mention of Pip Spooks. They have a base 5% chance to spawn on a headstone, with an additional 5% being tacked on for every Wendy in the world. Pip Spooks don't really do much for anyone outside of Wendy as Wendy is the only one that can help the little ones find their lost toys to obtain the morning glory to help her access all of her potions. So, good stuff. But, why do they call it Maxwell Cemetery Beard? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps it's just the two frickin' Maxwell statues that surround the joint, but that's anyone's guess. These are fairly common even outside of set pieces with the chest biomes, and drop about two to three marble chunks each, and a figure sketch to boot when mined into oblivion, and both have their uses. Of course, the kingly figure sketch can be given to the potter's wheel to unlock the sculpture itself, and said sculpture can be made with a marble, cut stone, or moon glass medium, along with two rocks for your pleasure, be it for simple decoration or for use as an impassable wall. However, before we talk more marble, we should probably talk about how we can get some more marble. Four marble pillars circle this set piece, and when mined, they also drop two to three marble chunks. But yup, that's about it really. Smash and grab. Because honestly, marble is bloody amazing. Maybe even more so now than ever before. Not only are marble suits cheaper at but six marble and two rope over the past's 12 marble and four rope craft, it goes into checker flooring turf, marble beans that simply allow us to grow even our own marble, Walter's marble ammo, and the end table structure itself. Yup. Marble, be good. Evil flowers also come packed within the set piece, and while there are certain mechanics to them that may serve most experienced players out there, there is really only a few things to note in connection with the set piece itself, I guess. Evil flowers have a negative sanity aura of minus 25 per minute. Picking and eating them drops sanity by 5 points each, and lastly, that four of them refined together with the Presta Hatitator equals a single thing of nightmare fuel. Scary stuff. But 
have finally carpeted flooring. Also very common in various chest biomes, this set piece offers tons of the stuff however, but why even bother pitchforking it up? Well, it can help spruce up the base a little bit. No lure plants can spawn on it, which is an added bonus. Obtaining some this way obviously saves plenty of resources, and you're going to need some anyway for that end table craft that we just mentioned prior. So, turf is good fun. And it happens to be on sale now. Go check some out. But while that may be the last tidbit for the set piece itself, there is one last potential takeaway. The pig farm ghost method. Every full moon sees a ghost spawn from every grave in the world. And since ghosts are hostile to darn near everything in this game, we can just let them do all the porky genocide for us. Safe, fast, and just something very fun to do. It's unique and great. And there you have it everyone, Uncle Maxwell's Cemetery and all its ghastly glory. For the most part, it is certainly a one and done deal with you hopefully scoring well with the dug up graves and then kind of forgetting about it. However, if you do know the ways of the dead whisperers, then it could be so much more. But thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, stay spooky, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.